it's time to say it. We've had about a year of this nonsense now. Rishi Sunak is worse than Boris Johnson, and I would argue considerably worse. Now, it's important to say this because a lot of political coverage often focuses on tone, style, vibes, if you like, rather than actual substance. Now, for all too many of Boris Johnson's so-called centrist critics, what most seemed to antagonise and rile them about him was that he's seen as kind of vulgar, crude, basically embarrassing. It was, ah, oh, what a humiliation to be ruled by this total buffoon, that kind of thing. Now, you might think, hold on a minute, it wasn't just the vibes of Johnson that even some of his critics, he might not be as left-wing as me, it wasn't just that that they objected to. Now, for example, there's no question that Johnson, on the substance, played a pivotal role in driving through a particularly hard and damaging form of Brexit, which I don't think will hold, incidentally. That doesn't mean I think we're going to end up back in the European Union, certainly not for the foreseeable future. But this form of Brexit is causing so much disruption and economic damage. The polling now shows that 62% of voters think it's more of a failure than a success, with just 9% thinking it's the opposite. I would love to meet those 9% and just... Just hear they're working out um, how they got to that conclusion. So you can see how we'd end up with a political consensus, which would emerge to change the Brexit deal that we have. But in any case, Sunak was a champion of this Brexit deal. And if we're honest, more of a true Brexit, Tory Brexit believer than Johnson. There's a broader point there, which I'm going to come on to. Now, Sunak campaigned for Brexit. He's clearly ideologically committed to it as a project, particularly its Tory interpretation of what Brexit is supposed to mean. Johnson himself famously wrote two columns, one for Remain, the other for Leave. That sums up their differences. Sunak, ideologue. Johnson, opportunist. Now, Johnson also is rightly condemned for his catastrophic handling of the pandemic, which has killed well over 200,000 of our fellow citizens. But Sunak brought lockdown sceptics into Downing Street back in the autumn of 2020, playing a pivotal role in facing down demands from SAGE for a circuit breaker lockdown in September 2020. That meant the virus spread further and we ended up with an even longer and more, f more severe set of lockdowns. Also, remember Eat Out to Help Out, which helped spread COVID. What was he thinking? And again ideologically committed in a way that Johnson, who's just blowing her around like a directionless clown. Now, the reason Johnson is so much worse than Johnson is because he is an ideologically committed right-winger. And if we're going down the road of focusing on character failings, which all too often the critique of Johnson focuses on, the main focus there is that Johnson is a liar. Well, so is Sunak. Last week, he did a national televised speech promising to scrap various supposed climate po policies. Um, I say supposed climate policies. What I mean is these policies did not exist. Compulsory car sharing doesn't exist. A meat tax wasn't going to happen. None of these existed. He was lying through his teeth to the nation in a specially convened national press conference for the sole purpose of lying to people. Now, these lies are worse than those of Johnson's because Johnson's was a, generally about personal arse covering. He was trying to cover his own arse because of his own idiocy. And um, what Sunak was trying to do is undermine public support for tackling the biggest crisis facing human civilization, the climate emergency. So it's about policy and it's about the most important possible issue that we face. That makes him a worse liar than Boris Johnson. So that supposed kind of main character for, which I think often is what people focus on with Johnson, Sunak, far more egregious. Now, overall, the fact that Johnson is a hard right demagogue, I just want to flat, flesh that out compared to the opportunist uh, Boris Johnson. When Tory MPs were attempting to remove Boris Johnson, I wrote a column warning that what would come next would be worse. Now, the basis for me saying that was that was because Tory members and many Tory MPs um, opposed Johnson, um, but the reason they opposed it wasn't really because of the terrible things he did. They they thought he's too left wing. They thought he wasn't Tory enough. They didn't think he was committed to the Thatcherite crusade because he's an opportunist, not an ideologue. He didn't subscribe to the sort of shrink the state dogma of Thatcherism that they hold dear. He shifted the Tories away from the hardcore austerity of the George Osborne, David Cameron years. His shtick was Brexit plus investment, the NHS, schools and police above all else. Now, don't get me wrong, this is so much based more on rhetoric than truth. 
Remember that promise to build 40 new hospitals by 2030? That turned out it meant including refurbishing existing ones, the cheeky git, also baking in the cuts that had come before him. But there was no question that he didn't subscribe to the same slash and burn cuts agenda of his predecessors. He was prepared to turn on the spending taps in ways that accorded, of course, to Tory strategic aims, particularly throwing money at areas he needed to short the Tory electoral coalition, a kind of right-wing uh, Keynesianism. But Liz Truss was the product of this because, you see, it's one thing after Partygate to go, if you're a Tory, we need to get rid of this guy. He's a liar. He's a charlatan. He's in it for himself. Totally unfit for high office. All the things they knew when he made him leader, by the way. But if you're going to get rid of him, you need to replace him with someone with popular appeal who can at the very least reconsolidate the electoral coalition which led you to victory at the previous election. But Tory members had decided he was too left-wing, so they needed a leader who was a proper Tory, that is to do hardcore Thatcherism. But that isn't the perspective the Tories won the last election on, nor does it accord with the spirit of the age in which we live. Now, some might go, well, Sunak didn't agree famously with attack, trust, take, talk, and lost the leadership election to her, which is extremely embarrassing. Basically, he thought it was just too far too fast. He didn't object to it on purely ideological grounds. Now, after assuming the premiership, um, what under, so Sunak took over after Trust boom, crashed and burned, along with the economy, uh, the old pro-investment positioning of Johnson gave way to cuts and renewed austerity. In fact, Trust wasn't herself committing to austerity. She was committing to spending with tax cuts. We now hear they plan to abolish inheritance tax, which only the richest 4% pay, a massive bung to the already well-off, helping to entrench the class system, because the class system is so much about inheritance. Now, Sunak is rowing back, of course, on the Tories' solemn commitment to net zero, which was in the last manifesto. That led to him being condemned, of course, by Boris Johnson. Even before the latest deceitful nonsense, they committed to expanding oil and gas concessions in the North Sea. Now, the Johnson administration was already awful on migrants and refugees, but this lot are even worse, with Sorella Braverman, just a crude caricature of inhumanity, now clamping down on gay refugees. There's this constant obsession with waging war on trans people, including seeking to out trans kids, whether their parents are supportive or not. The culture wars, if you like. Johnson dabbled with it, but Sunak is well in for it. He's clearly committed from the heart, from an ideological position, to waging culture wars. That's what he's doing on climate, that's what he's doing on migrants and refugees, and that's what he's doing on LGBTQ rights, including now scrapping the uh, commitment to ban conversion therapy. Now, Sunak had not nurtured this technocratic, moderate persona, in contrast to Johnson, but he's an ideological position who is self-evidently from the right, and excluding Liz Truss, because what's the point, he is the most right-wing conservative leader since Michael Howard. And Michael Howard, of course, was in opposition. He wasn't prime minister. Now, the problem is the sorts of people he attracted Rishi Sunak before uh, were kind of liberally remainery types. And now he's pissed those people off. But the Tory right don't trust him because they regard him as a traitor for knifing Johnson. Neither is this hard right agenda popular, which is why the Tories did not run on it back in 2019. So it's no surprise that the la latest polling has his personal ratings on minus 45, slightly less popular than tuberculosis. Now, yes, his main opponent is Keir Starmer, who is completely unprincipled, deceitful and unpopular. He's on minus 25. But the sheer scale of social disaster that this government has presided over is what is condemning them to the terrible electoral cataclysm that they face. Rishi Sunak is considerably worse than Boris Johnson. He's more ideological, he's more committed to traditional Thatcherite ideas, and he's committed to culture wars, which in practice mean whipping up bigotry against marginalised minorities and sacrificing action to tackle the existential menace of the climate emergency. He should be condemned by history, I'm sure he will be, as an absolutely woeful Prime Minister, but this is a very important lesson. Always focus on substance rather than tone, style and vibes, because that's how you work out, in my view, the nature of a politician. It's not how vulgar or crude they are, it's what they actually do. And that's what condemns Sanak. Please like, subscribe, do support us on patreon.com forward slash 84 Listen to us on the podcast. I'll see you in a bit.